Welcome back, fellas. Hello. Hello. We are here well into the third season. Well, like a third, if not more. Um, and today, we went back to Netflix, our pride and joy, to watch <laughs> Munich, The Edge of War. How are you guys feeling tonight before we get started? I feel good. Good? Yeah. good? Generally good? good? I have my hat on backwards today. He's yeah, pretty cool. Atch He's... Keshem. That's Bus- not a business, business casual. No, no business this is casual. The, I gotta get <laughs> like shit done backwards. mode. That's what I mean by get like oh, business. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the yeah, yeah, serious business. All right. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of serious business, uh, this movie <laughs> <laughs> this is a very serious business. This is a very movie. serious movie. Um, a British diplomat travels to Munich uh, in the run up to World War II, uh, where a former cl- former classmate of his from Oxford is also en route, but is working for the German German government. Uh, there is an unlikely exchange of information and. I would say a growth of character, uh, but it's definitely a very tense movie. Even though this isn't characterized as a thriller, I would say like it gave me more so than many of the thrillers we've watched on this show. I was on pins and needles more. Uh, but this is a biography drama uh, history slash history movie. Uh, the director was Christian. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> you practiced, you practiced the actor's it. name and not the director. That is so good. How do you say Schwa? How do you say that name? Christian Schwachau. Schwachau. Is it German? I don't know. All right. Um, writer, written by German. Ben Power. Ben Power and Robert Harris. Uh, and this movie storage, uh, jo- stars George McKay, Giannis Niewalher, Walner. Nope. <laughs> nope, you practiced. You practiced. I did. I, now I'm all thrown out of thing the, because the of Christian's The W's name. a V and the O has an umlaut, so it's an U. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an U. <laughs> Kevin knows how to speak some German. Nope. nope. Nope, I took German in high school. I, I would never <laughs> consider myself being able to speak some German. But I don't know how to pronunciate. <laughs> so, Kevin. All right, Kevin. So, how would you say it? Nivoner. 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 All right. Nivoner. Giannis Nivoner and then Jeremy Irons. Um, don't forget, before we get into our first reactions, to go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're really trying to do a push on there. In addition, go check out our Patreon. Uh, we uh, are putting out content there. We're excited to have you on there. And we're actually putting some exclusive content on our Patreon. Actually, it's also not too much. It's $1 a month. So, you know. We actually have our first patron who should be getting a Woo. shout out in this episode, but chose to remain anonymous. So we will respect their wishes <laughs> and not give them a shout out. But thank you for supporting the show. We love them. We love them. All right. Uh, so now to get to first reactions, let's go with Kevin. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was uh, a slow burn, but it didn't pace itself poorly. Like each, most of the scenes, there was kind of that build and that suspense. So you were kind of pulled into it. Maybe a scene here or there kind of dragged on a little bit. But um For the most part, I enjoyed it. I like spy stuff and um, political stuff. I what I didn't really like about it is that it it felt like it should have been a true story, but when I looked it up, it's not a true story. So part of me was thinking, should they have gone more, even more thriller since it wasn't true anyway so make some more exciting twists or something of that nature that you would typically see in like a spy movie um because it's not true anyway so why wouldn't you include some kind of backstab or like some kind of twist um you know so that was kind of my only gripe with the movie as a whole but the acting was really good that mckay kid's been in a lot recently and he's really good and then the German guy, uh, Nivoner, um, I've never seen him before, but I thought he did a great job. And yeah, Jeremy Irons is always stellar. So I thought it was a pretty good movie. Yeah, I agree. Nice. Joey? I thought it was a great quality movie, uh, good production value, good acting, good story. I had the same realization with Kev. I thought I was watching like a true story. And 
a lot of it is true events. Like there was a lot mm-hmm. of the people were real. Some of them, some were made up. Um, a lot of the story, like the meetings that happened, did actually happen. But this was an extreme dramatization yep. of things that happened behind the scenes that probably didn't actually happen. And I agree. I was expecting either if you're going to go fictional with such a iconic character of Adolf Hitler, like either go completely dramatic and make it a, like a what if type of situation, or like stick to historical accuracy because World War Two has like endless stories of people that tried to take out Hitler. Um, so that's where I was kind of a little conflicted with it, but it was also based off of a book or a novel. So the movie really couldn't probably veer off too much from that. They could have maybe used it as inspiration right. and gone a little further. But other than that, I think it was good. It was really good, entertaining. It's a good, like serious watch tense. It is a thriller. Like James said, you are kind of like on the edge of your seat at the same time. We all know what Hitler did. So you also <laughs> know the ending kind of of this movie and like how it ends. So it's not super like new or exciting in the sense that like you don't know how it's going to end. I think there's a lot that keeps you kind of gripped and engaged throughout that it does actually feel like exciting. And you at some times are like, wait, what's going to happen? How is this going to happen? How's, how are they going to meet? How are they going to do this? So I thought it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I agree, Joey. Um, so I do think that like this did take so like obviously to agree to your point I think it was a good movie I thought it was a very good like somewhat historical piece or pseudo historical piece um, to challenge so Kevin I Kevin and Joey I agree with your point that um, if it's a narrative story like you can kind of take a little more liberty with the storytelling and like you can kind of bend the rules you know what I mean like a little more and like characters can like more dramatic things can happen but i honestly think it may even lend itself to how good the movie was that like it seemed realistic you know what i mean like it committed Mm. to like following a realistic scenario that could have happened you know Mm. um because it's you know uh and i thought that was a that's that's a accolade i guess i would give to the movie um but i agree that like i definitely think that in the beginning it was a bit slow uh it was a bit of a slow burn up until they really made it to Munich, um, and in which you know it very quickly ramped up and was very intense. Um, I think that um, yeah, no. Overall, I, I thought it was a really good watch. Um, like it really, it was a long movie. You know, po- over two hours. Uh, but mm-hmm. I felt like the entire time uh, I was uh, I was enthralled. Like I was into it. In addition, I remember what I forgot. Um, I feel like this is an untold story of World War II. Like, I've seen a lot of World War II, like, content, I guess, or, like, a lot of World War II stories, but I feel like it doesn't really focus on, like, Neville Chamberlain a lot. It usually focuses on, like, the Winston Churchill era, you know? At least, like... Because well, that was, that yeah. was like, the war, right, was Winston yeah. Churchill, because he was out. Neville was out. He had almost as soon as like, the war like started, pretty pr- yeah. yeah, almost immediately he resigned. Yeah. I, yeah. I think so. That is the war. Unless you're telling these stories leading up to the war, um, you're not really going to see. But I think that's James's right? point in, in is that they war don't movie. typically yeah. show the start of World War Two. Yeah, and it's interesting to see like all like again because it's one of these things that like you know everyone is aware of you know what happened in World War Two and like what like you know the repercussions and everything that happened, but the, the lead in, you know what I mean? Like the meetings yeah. and the conversations that happened yeah. are very mm-hmm. interesting. And that was interesting about the, what is that? The Munich meeting that they called yeah. it. Is that what it was called? About um, the Sudetenland. No. Yeah. And that's, I feel like something that, like you said, James, we don't get a lot, especially American movies when they do world war two, it's when American America joined the war, which was so late into the war. Like, so, mm-hmm. like, we joined right at the end. So, everything you see is just, like, like the beginning of World War II in American movies is just D-Day. Yeah, like, that, every time. that's <laughs> literally the beginning of World War II for us. Yeah. So, it is interesting to see the, the, pol- the politics behind, like, what started the war, how Hitler was viewed before the war happened, um, right after World War I you know, and in, in, in the years leading up to World War Two. So that stuff all was very fascinating to me. But where the movie fell flat was like, you know, as as much as it had really suspenseful scenes and it had really like like entertaining p- 
pieces to the movie, you know that nothing they're going to do is going <laughs> to stop World War II. Like, yeah, that's right. kind of what the suspense is going to be is like, oh, if they get this and, and uh, what's his face, Chamberlain doesn't sign it, then like, they, or like, he can call out Hitler and we can take him out of power, but like, that doesn't happen, and so it loses yeah. that but that magic and that suspense because you're I'll like. I'll say well, this like, to James's point is like there's not like this was a very true conference that happened, um, that did stall the war and gave them an extra year of peace in Europe. Yeah, beforehand. that's true. Yeah, I genuinely didn't yep. know about this, so I was questioning for a while if he signed it or if he didn't sign it. Like I didn't know. They don't really give you times in this. They just say six years later, mm-hmm. so they don't really say, like, what year it is. And they don't really, like – so you don't know necessarily when war, war is going to start. So he – realistic for someone who doesn't know the story to be like, oh, Chamberlain doesn't sign it, and that's the start of the war. So that's what I was expecting. We did mm-hmm. know it was 1938, though. Did we? Because they say 1932 in the beginning. True. And then yeah. they do six years but, later. Yeah. But we know you're not good at math. math so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also not like they're not like – it's not like Cherry. It's not very like, explicit. Where they're like, <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah, or like, Cherry's like, <laughs> like the extreme. Yeah, yeah or like yeah. – or what should we call it? What's uh, yeah. Shining? Yeah. They do that? Yeah. Like, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so to take that over from our first reactions, boys, uh, Joey, because I started with Kevin, I'm going to start with you this time. Are you going to click play or keep scrolling on this uh, one? I'm going to press play. This is a good, uh, serious watch when you want to see a good piece of cinema, as Kevin would say, when you want to watch how, when you say, like, that's how movies are supposed to be made or what they're supposed to be. Like, this is one of those movies, I think, and it's entertaining. And you know what? There are some people who just don't know anything about history, so it could be educational, too. I'm going to say press play. Yeah. Sounds good, Kevin. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there too. I'm at like a, like a soft play, even though I hate when we say soft and hard play. Um, mine's like a very soft play. Cause while it is like the, the cinematography, the acting, like everything surrounding the movie is really good. To me, the story just fell a little flat, but not enough to skip this movie. It's good enough to keep your attention for two hours. And it is a story that we don't typically get to see or a time period where we don't typically get um, in World War II era movies. So, um, yeah, mine's a soft play. I could yeah. be persuaded otherwise, but it sounds like you're also going to be on that page. So, Yeah, I definitely think that I'm more – I'm probably – harder and I'm, I'm a more competent play i'm with joey mm. um the acting was phenomenal the like the production value was really good uh the you know i just thought that like all around this is a very good movie it did start a little slow but i feel like that's kind of how historical pieces are like it's not as like you know it's not it doesn't grab you like a real net na- like this is a narrative story but they try to be somewhat realistic so there is more of a gradual burn into a more serious situation um but I don't think that that faults the movie enough where you shouldn't go watch it. I think it's definitely worth the two hour, 10 minute sit down. Um, but yeah, click play on this one. Very, very good. Um, all right. Well, any last thoughts, gentlemen, before we get into spoilers? I'll say this. It could go either section, but I'm going to say it now. I wasn't impressed with <laughs> their interpretation of what Hitler looked like. <laughs> <laughs> did you know him personally i've seen pictures <laughs> actual photographs of they had yeah. cameras <laughs> they like, had, that's yeah. all no we don't need to go deeper into that we can go into the commercial now yeah we'll talk about it next yeah sounds good this one's all gonna right. this episode's gonna be so funny because like i feel like talk any time you're talking about world war ii and hitler <laughs> like it can just get so dicey so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it is an atrocity. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It went from zero to 100 very quickly. Yeah. Um, on that note, thank you for watching this. Uh, please stick around if you want to see some spoilers and what we think about the movie uh, in full context. Uh, make sure you subscribe, and we really appreciate you watching along. And welcome back. Thank you, sponsors. And hey, you know, shout out to that anonymous patron. We love you. And, hey, anyone else that wants to be a patron, we will happily shout you out on the podcast and thank you for your patronage. Um, check out the link in the description of the video. But after talking about that, gentlemen, thoughts on Munich Edge of War? 
Sick name. I feel like, I feel like the, that is a sick name. Um, and he almost said it. You know, that's the best part of a movie is when they say the title of the movie. And he almost said it, but he doesn't. He, like, teases you a little bit. He's like, we're on the edge. And I'm like, the edge of what? The edge of oh, what? <laughs> Pull the lobe. Pull oh, the lobe. Gee, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Pull the uh, lobe. Yeah. Neville Chamberlain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the German says it. The German oh, says it. Screaming at him, right? Because he's trying to meet with Chamberlain. He's like, let me just uh, talk to him. He's like, we're on the edge. <laughs> um, but... I don't even know. Where was I going? We started yelling. Where was I going with that? What did I say? <laughs> I get so distracted with everybody else. <laughs> oh, no. I feel like this is just one of those that is like a, a good movie. And it it isn't bad enough where I have a ton of shit that I have to say about this movie. And it's not like stellar enough where I have a lot of stuff to say. It's just a, good, a, solid, like a solid watch. Um, his wife annoyed the fuck out of me in the beginning uh the british dude's wife yeah, and she's like that. why is she so fucking mad like he works for the prime minister like and there's a war about to happen like give give him a fucking break are you kidding me <laughs> like he's dealing with some important fucking shit i bet she felt so bad a year later when there's a fucking world war and there are atrocities happening in germany and he's like Hey, like I told you that what I was doing <laughs> was important, okay. babe. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm out here trying to stop a literal world war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, literally, he is trying to stop a world <laughs> war. Uh, they already lived through one of those. Like yes. they just had one, like not too long ago. And mm -hmm. he knew it was happening again. And he's like, I'm just trying to stop this. And she's like, You have a son. And he's like. My son might not live if this happens. So, like, He's like, I'm doing this for my son. Yeah. And a lot of well, other people. It's funny because I watch this movie with Amanda. And we usually don't watch. She usually doesn't watch the movies we pick because they're not really her demographic. But she wanted to watch this one with me. And earlier, I don't know if it was that same day that we watched or just like recently, we've kind of gotten a little like bickering because I was like, I have to go do some work. Like when it wasn't like work hours, it was like freelance work. And she was like, well, similar kind of like fight of like, oh, like spend time with me. I got to go to work. Obviously not to the yeah. scale of what he was. Yeah, you're not, not stopping. You weren't work. stopping any work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But literally. <laughs> Joey's like, my pains <laughs> are the you same are, pains. No. Who, who do you think you are? I acknowledge that it was not are me at the same scale. Me? But it was funny because we were watching this and literally both of us just like look at each other and start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and That's I was so like, good. whose side are you that on in so this good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, like, in the movie, you have to be on the husband's side. Like, there is no mm. woman. Like, the, that was almost well, I mean, like, so bad. The woman doesn't advocate. make any point to, at all. To play, <laughs> to play devil's advocate, I understand the, like, hey, like, times are getting – times are going to get real bad. Like, like, and obviously she didn't have this foresight, but, like – Times are about to get really bad. You're going to really appreciate more time that you spent with your son. You know what I mean? Like, but I, that's not, I'm not saying that that's the point that she's making, but like, she's kind of right. Like, you I know, know what I mean? Like, war's going to happen regardless. You know what I mean? I think like, this movie was do the best way that But he was. She started World War II. <laughs> she kind of did. He if he acted did. earlier, yeah. like, you never know. But, you know, he was also being a little, a little bitch. When they were at lunch, Kevin's just slinging it today, man. Yeah, Kevin. I'm. I'm just like going into this relationship, but they were at lunch, and this annoyed the shit out of me too, actually, while I was watching it. And it's their anniversary, so they're at this nice lunch, and yeah. he, the the spy, the British guy, says, "I wish we could just get a room upstairs and spend the rest of the day in the room together." And she's like, "That would be so nice. Like, why can't we?" Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, just making friendly conversation. And he's like, S like stop pressuring me, woman. <laughs> he's like, I got important work to do. <laughs> and she says it. She's like, you brought it up. And I was like, yeah, yeah you tell him. He did bring it up. You, know. like, <laughs> you tell him. Fuck you don't need him. Yeah. You can't. You literally can't be like, man, wouldn't it be so nice if we can do this thing? And then the person just literally, this us. person sitting across from you is like, you're literally the reason we can't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then and then he is mad that she is excited about it. Man, 
<laughs> but the relationship was like not the important part of this movie. No, Anybody it wasn't. listening, that was not very important. <laughs> well, you're yeah. I'm I'm acting like like it's. I'm surprised that I the Nazis kidding. performed an atrocity. <laughs> yeah. Like yes. we were watching this. Yeah, they were known for that's that. their mo. Their har- their horrible. It's also like the thing is like again like I've talked about this like video games right. Like, you need an evil person, and then, like, it's either the one safe bet for every video game is Nazis or aliens. Like, those are the two mm. things, and, and zombies. Like, those are the three, right? It's like, you can make any video game, and that's the evil person that you spend hours killing. You know what I mean? And it's totally cool. Nobody's mad about it. But if it's anywhere else, it's, like, super vague where the people are from. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, like, a made-up place or, like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, some, like, made-up country. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, yeah. No way, nobody's going to have an issue with you making the Nazis the villains in yeah. some form of media because they literally because the villains. <laughs> are the villains. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the-, <laughs> the one circumstance where it's, like, that's definitely the bad guy, and there's well, no redeeming it's qualities. It's funny because we were watching this, and at one point, something, like, sad happened, and Amanda was like, oh, like, that's so sad. And I was like, babe, they are literally Nazis. And she was like, oh, my God. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> like, you're right. Yeah. Like, they're not sad. That is not sad. <laughs> yeah. Don't they, be you know, sad like, for them. Oh, they it, do bad things. A lot of the <laughs> sub-characters around it are not all dressed in uniform with swastikas all over them. Like, it's not – Germany mm. that we yeah. see from like the history books are just like Nazi soldiers everywhere. Like this is still pre war. There's still people on both sides who are like pro Hitler and anti Hitler. But a pre date. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of Nazis in this movie. <laughs> 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 yes. There's yeah. There's a lot of people that are very much already drinking the Kool Aid. But there's yeah, hundred percent. Like there's civilians in every war effort, you know, I mean there's people that are like on the opposing nation that don't want to be, you know what I mean? Like, there's people that had to go fight in the war that didn't want to go fight in the war, mm-hmm. you know? But, you know what I mean? It, they did bad things. <laughs> nobody's like, nobody's what, arguing that. <laughs> do you guys, like, when you watch World War II movies, just think about how, like, like crazy that is? That, like, Nazis were an issue at some point? Like, that, it can get that bad in a country. And, like, obvious, like obviously it's still possible, but, like... <laughs> It can get that bad that you have a yep. literally a regime running a country yes. like that. And it's yes. like, do you think – I think about that every time I watch. And that's why it's good to obviously watch these movies so that we we remember that stuff like that is possible if we're not careful and that, like, government can be scary. But that is, like, always crazy to me that that was yep. a time that people lived in. And it wasn't long ago you know, at even, all. Like, crazier like, s- at all. There are Six, people uh, – eight eight years? Like you said, they lived through both World War One and World War Two, and there's also people who I would imagine also lived through like the American Civil War. They lived through like three big ass yep. wars, and like that's just the constant like. I it's possible. 1865. When did the Civil War end? 1860. So like yeah. 25. Yeah, so you could potentially, like, somebody's, like, yeah, 80, like, like, they're, like, you, could be, you know what I mean? They could pass away during, yeah. it's crazy. And, like, crazy that's just, to like, think your about. constant norm. Yeah. Just, like, okay, every 20 years we have a big-ass war that just destroys everything, and yeah. this is the way it is. Yo, that is so fucking trippy. I knew, obviously, the years of when these war happened, but when you start to stack, like, imagine being a 10-year-old kid in 1865, okay? And... The Civil War happens. They're fucking fighting that shit with, like, what? Muskets and pistols? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, like, then by the time you're 50, they're fucking dropping nuclear bombs on other... Like, that. how how do you comprehend that technology change, (laughs) like, over the course? The biggest technology change we've had is, like, computers. Like, that's really cool. But, like, that's not going from fucking muskets and, like, just... The shittiest times, like to ever, world like, everything sucked back then. Weapons. To like yeah, world ending devices, machine guns, like mm-hmm. fucking like radios, like yeah. crazy shit. How does that? Ha- how do you yeah, comprehend do- that as a human being? How did our heads not fucking explode <laughs> yeah. during it was that time? 60, That's crazy. Was it sixty years? <laughs> when was the end of world? When was the end of civil war? Eighteen sixty-five. Uh, Eighteen sixty-five. Eighteen sixty-five. So it was almost World War Two was over in what? Nineteen forty-two. And then World War. To end in World War One was nineteen thirteen to nineteen eighteen, I think. So it was like almost a hundred years later, a little less than a hundred years later, like twenty years less than a hundred so years 80. later. 
That's not me doing math. <laughs> but but like, that's wild. That is crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, think that's about crazy. like what's eighty years ago, right? Like nineteen. It'd, it'd be the. It's World literally different. Like, so you're saying that? Yeah. Well, it's World yeah, War II. Yeah, it's literally so it's fucking. <laughs> <sad that. laughs> I, I I laughed around. I was like, James, you just said that. You just said the that. Conversation. <laughs> but oh man. Also, um, in the same yes. vein of conversation, they referenced World War One at one point, but they call it the Great War. Isn't it crazy that like yeah. yes, the way war names of wars can <laughs> they change. were about to get a sequel to the <laughs> they like didn't yeah. realize they were like oh shit that was a world war and then like oh shit we're in another world war like we should probably start like <laughs> yeah, that's about to happen again. again. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's it's interesting because it gives you the context of the time too. Because it's like you know what I mean. Like it's we like hindsight's twenty twenty. We're a hundred years out or sixty years out from you know. We're like we're beyond many huge. There's obviously world events happening all the time, but like when you're beyond the world event, you look back and you can look back at it with the context of everything that's happened since then. So. It, all right, let's. I think we we've we strayed very far from the movie. Well, I think one more stray from the movie. Not really. Have you guys been watching? <laughs> I, me trying to direct we'll us back, back to we'll the movie. And Joey's so like, "Wow, hey, we're, James, we're like, pretty far. <laughs> what if there. we went this farther?" This movie, we all agree, it's a good movie. It's worth a watch. Let's just keep talking for a minute. Have you guys been watching the Olympics at all? <laughs> oh they my god! Literally. <laughs> I watched like a they couple of events. They built but... these man-made like slopes in a nuclear oh, power yeah. plant park. <laughs> like... Yeah, and like yeah, that's crazy. It, and they put yeah, the, the logo yeah. on it. They're just like, oh look, we made it festive. <laughs> like, oh my god, yeah. every <laughs> shot insane. from like the snowboarding and ski competitions, like you see the nuclear power plants in the background because it's like five feet away. That's yeah. nuts. Okay, now back hey, to the man. movie, James. You only got so much space. <laughs> No, China no, has plenty of space. <laughs> Next. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay, so back to the movie. Um, what did you guys think of the um, the relationship between um, Paul Van uh, Paul Von Hartman and Hugh Leggett? Cares. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, that's the whole point we're here. <laughs> um, I, it. It was just quick. Like, I think they did a good job. Like, <laughs> Kevin goes, I like it. <laughs> it was fine. It, it was fine. They didn't explore it that much. They did a couple flashbacks, but it wasn't explored enough where I was like, like, compelled. Very enthralled. Yeah, compelled by this relationship. Um, especially because it probably could have been a little more interesting since, with given their history and the fact that. He loved Hitler, like, back then, and then he was like, oh, shit, this guy's <laughs> bad shit. Yeah. Um, so they could have probably explored it a little more, but I think they did an okay job for so, the most part. I don't want to, like, make this comparison and have it live on the internet type of thing, but... The... Oh, no. <laughs> you're, about, you're fucking about to. <laughs> yeah, you just the, primed yourself. <laughs> what I would say felt very close to home and, like, relative to today in this was the divisiveness oh, yeah. over politicians in the sense oh, yeah. that like oh 100 yeah. you know people mm-hmm. were so passionate about hitler because they thought he was going to restore this national pride and make germany great again and i didn't mean to do the exact <laughs> joey. same oh god joey, <laughs> a little, joey. That was a little on the nose <laughs> but, <laughs> who who it could you be talking little... about? It's like, it's like yeah. don't look up all no, over again. Like, just fucking say it. on the like... nose <laughs> that I was like, is this meant to be a World War II movie? Or is this meant to kind of be a reflection of, like, current society? Well, I actually, I actually thought that was well done. Because it wasn't exaggerated. Because, at least from what I know about World War II and the events leading up to it is that you did have those fanatics like we have now that thought that Hitler was just going to come in and save the country and do all these great things and ignored those ra- those more radical views about them or, or ignored anything wrong with Hitler because of how much they liked Hitler. So I think it was a great comparison and it is very relevant today. Um, so I thought they did a I think that was not on, not too on the nose. It wasn't like they were trying mm-hmm. to hide it. 
because it's based in reality. It's yeah. not like just some fictional, uh, you know, Republican woman president uh, with a stupid idiot son uh, <laughs> advisor. <laughs> That's you mean being Hill? super on the nose. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh right, we watched that movie. Oh yeah, it fucking sucked. Um, but yeah, this I thought they did a good job at that. Kev, not a shit I want to like let you know that you were talking about an Oscar nominated film right now. Saying, <laughs> "Oh my god, oh my goodness, that does." Look, I know we're straying away again. That movie did not belong on the best. No, it did not. Best picture no. nominees. Like, Neither did Sign of the Dog. Or <laughs> Power of the Dog. Oh my god! Everybody it loves it, dude. We're fucking so dumb. Bad. I think. It's I think bad. we missed. It's bad. I think we need it's to do a bonus episode where we reassess it because we must good. have missed something. It's not <laughs> like, entertaining. It's not a good movie. Like I get it. Like I get the symbolism. I get the. It's a good art piece, but it's not a good movie. It's not the crazy thing. Is a lot you know? of people right. do agree with us in that sense that like. They were confused mm. as to why it was so long, and it's not about much. And but they understand that it's a good movie, that there's symbolism, that it's art. It's an art piece, and that's why it's. But everybody's excited. We're about the Millers. The you mean Mitchell's versus the Machines? <laughs> oh God, Mitchell's. God, why did I say we're the Millers? Mitchell's versus is... the Machine. Big time, best animated I... picture. It's going up against two Pixar movies, I don't but know. I think it's like, got it. What movies is it going up against? Luca, I think. Um, Encanto, Luca. Um, Luca was really good. Those are the two Mitchell's, important ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mitchell's Mitchell's is better than Luca, but Luca was really good. Encanto was good too. I liked Encanto, but you guys didn't. Um, okay, to so get back, I guess I guess it's one of those things that this movie is like. We're all just like, this is a good movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, I it think was we entertaining. All agree. Yeah, it was. It was like a good piece of like content. The acting performance was very good. The production quality was very good. Um, the setting was very nice. Like I, I think they did a really good job of making you feel like you're like in a foreign place. You know, um, mm-hmm. and it was like a good time kind of setting. You know, everything felt uh, genuous to the time. You know. We're gonna say genuous now. Yeah. I, well, I, I was gonna, I like genuous <laughs> I, though. I, I, I was gonna say disingenuous, but I was like, I actually need the opposite of that. So would that just be genuous? But I had that entire thought within like a half second in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have time to work it out in your head. <laughs> so I was like, just we're just gonna throw it out there. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, no, I just like overall, like it was just well done. Like really, 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 just well done uh, piece of work. Um, so you know. Uh, Anything else on this movie or just, like, other topics we want to touch on before we get to our game? Um, yeah, let's talk about the geopolitical climate uh, <laughs> before World War II. And the- <laughs> 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 I don't really have much else. I don't think – I didn't really write much down for the movie. Um, I'm trying to think of – the suspense was really good. Like, the suspense scenes were really good. Yeah. Like, like him in the wait, train, in the office with trying to what hide it? the thing in the office with the gun. I'd be shitting my fucking brains Can out. We talk but about also, the hero of the movie, dude, fucked up. The typewriter Who? woman. Oh, the lady that grabbed <laughs> yeah. the thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. the lady that grabbed See, the paper. Yeah, that was really cool. But also, it felt uh, that that reveal and everything just felt kind of unearned. Like I wasn't. Um, super concerned about the papers <laughs> like, <laughs> i was like Man, the that movie. stinks the nazis got the papers back yeah but you're not too concerned about it because he already saw it like neville chamber and he wasn't it. gonna do anything yeah. about it so i was like that sucks like one of those two guys is gonna get fucking murked by the nazis so but like i wasn't like too stressed about it so when she was like i'm in mi6 and i have this piece of paper i was like cool i guess like that was a cool twist. i kind of saw it coming that she was more important than they yeah. made her out to be um but yeah it just felt like that was she was o- an og for for snagging that before the nazis did but like yeah. it wasn't i wasn't like like oh nice like yeah. cool it i was, was cool. like ah cool uh, like nice good job yeah it was way to do your job <laughs> Way to congratulations! Her job. You did your fucking job. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did the easiest job. This dude's out here smuggling plans, <laughs> not risking Germany. his life, <laughs> and you just like open the drawer in the morning, like super, like what? Do your fucking job. Like don't yeah. think you're also for doing it. The relationship between uh, the German guy and like uh, Frau Winter was very strange. I didn't know that they were romantically involved. Like I kind of got the vibe. Until the very end. And they were just like, 
Dude, like, they're I, like they're like macking on each other ten minutes into the movie. Wait, was wait. that no no no? That's He's like grabbing person. her ass. No, no that's he was a like, different person. That's a different person. No, it fucking wasn't, dude. You're talking about like in the flashback or like in no, the... like literally in the beginning of the movie. There, he's like grab ass and her, like in in her apartment. I swear to God, that I, scene happened. It did happen. We knew they were involved the whole time. I missed it also, and the man, I was like shocked. And Amanda was like, what? They, like, made it so obvious from the beginning. Like, he's grabbing her ass. Like, And I was like, oh. Oh, no, maybe I just, just missed that scene. Yeah, like, what are you yeah. talking about, dude? How do you I guys miss that? I remember I walked yeah, maybe I just... to get a glass of water and, like, came back and, like, missed it. Yeah, yeah. that might have been what it was. I just, like, looked away for a second or something. <laughs> oh, shut up, James. Was like, yeah, I was grabbing a glass of water <laughs> no, I, at that exact I, I, time, too. I, I grabbed it with Joey. I was with Joey. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, too. Me, too. Um, no, I was, that like, I so legitimately, funny. like, I just didn't. I think it's probably because they don't bring it up. Like. They definitely have a close relationship, and, like, there's definitely, like, you can kind of get the error that there's more there, but, like, there's no overt, like, PDA until the end of the movie, you know, after that scene that I missed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there is overt PDA quite early. Yeah, wait, they the make out, but, for, like, right um, before she gives him the letter. You're talking about the the woman that intercepted Frau Winter. The, yeah. Yes. Literally, he opens the door, they make out for a mm-hmm. hot minute, and then... I do yeah. remember that now. I don't know why I completely forgot about it. I was like, what do you mean, end of the movie? movie. Like, it was I don't know. Pretty, it was pretty quick that they... Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. I think I just, like, I, th- I think I just lost it somewhere. Um, but, yeah. At 29 minutes and 56 <laughs> you seconds. You are so fast. It's I know. ridiculous. <laughs> he's literally got his hand on her ass. I remember vividly, I was like, they're really showing him grab her ass right now. Oh, my God. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay. So, <laughs> after, after that vivid conversation. <laughs> James um, is like, I've got another prompt for you. How did you guys feel about the Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> Were they portrayed fairly? <laughs> God. All right, <laughs> let's play our game. Wait, but how did you guys feel? <laughs> <laughs> let's play our game. All right, boys, we're going in tomatometer, the tomato meter, and the audience score from Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, let us start with Joey. Which one are we starting with? And Joey, what do for you both, think? Both, or are we doing? What are we doing? First? Which one? Uh, do audience score first, and then we'll do tomato meter. Because I feel like audience score is. Yeah, easy, I think audience score is going to be pretty opinion. high for this one. I'm going to say I'm right on the brink of if it's a 90 or not, but I'm going to say 89. Mm-hmm. 89 for Joey. I was going to go Kevin. lower. I was going to go 80, 85. 85, 89? Okay. The yeah. audience score for this one was a 78. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. That's, what I'm, that's what my critics score I was going to say critics for low. Yeah. Meter. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. now right. I'm going to go even lower. Can All right, I go? let's start with Kevin for critic score. Critic score, I'm going now 71. 71. I strangely think it's going to be still really close. I'm going to say 77. Okay. 77. The critic score was 86. Whoa. Higher Whoa. than the audience score. Yeah. I feel like we haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah. 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 It's very yeah. rare. It's very rare. Uh, but, yeah, no, it was, it's a rated 8% higher on the critic score. And, honestly, I think I kind of agree get with it. the critics. I do, too. Yeah. I agree with the critics, too. But well, I kind of get yeah. where it's, like, a little so. slower. <laughs> right. That is true. That is true. We have, we have three seasons <laughs> of content, crit- like, criticizing movies. <laughs> Um, but yes, uh, no, I definitely, I think it's like a little slower. I think it's, uh, something that maybe like the average dumb audience goer may be like the stupid movie. You know what I mean? Like, and there's gonna be like one, 5%. No, I I think, no, that's you, Kevin. I think Uh Netflix movie, especially that people kind of expect like dumb, just constant entertainment humor. Like people would probably thought it was gonna be much more like action filled and dramatic and were let down, but critics they know what they're talking about in this one yeah i also feel like the trailer was very like spy oriented and like it felt very like even though the whole movie was about like some subterfuge it didn't feel like a spy movie to me i thought i thought this was one of the few where i watched um the trailer and i thought that they were 
actually spies. Like their job description Spy. was <laughs> like like international <laughs> espionage. You know, mm-hmm. like I thought that was their actual role. Um, and it is. I think it is more interesting when it's like two people who have no business being spies having to be spies. I think that's way mm-hmm. more interesting. Agreed. But um, it's like when Ryan Reynolds yeah. plays a nice All right, spy. boys. Uh, <laughs> It's true. <laughs> and a good <laughs> art theme. <laughs> um, so, boys, uh, I think I know we're all going with this, but let's start with Kevin. Kevin, are you doubling down? Uh, yeah, I'm going to double down. I-, I think this movie is enjoyable enough um, to sit. Like, it's got enough suspense to keep you entertained. And like we all said, it's in a time period you don't really get to see or a, a setting that you don't typically get to see in World War II movies. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm press and play. Nice. Same. Joey? I'm going to double down. Said all my reasons why. Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Me too. I, I think this one is a, uh, you know, it's a hard, like, it's good. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's worth the watch. Doubly down as well. Press play. All right, yeah. boys. Anything before we close this one out? No. Nope. Well, thank you, viewers, for watching this. Please subscribe if you haven't already to our YouTube channel. We're trying to grow our base on there. We thank ever, all of our subscribers that have already, you know, been brought on even within season three we've seen notable growth um but we're really excited to kind of put more content out there and be with you guys through our growing cycle as well and please you know comment on our videos we talk about we will talk about you in the uh the podcast we've talked about a few of our viewers many times um in addition check out our patreon it really helps us out uh especially with you know pushes for more content exclusive content for patreon and more things we could do on the podcast you know what i mean if we get uh you know, if we get more <clears throat> financial, you know, support with this, we can actually spend more time getting better equipment, doing more things with the content that we're putting out. So it's it helps us to help you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we really appreciate you watching along. Thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.